Here, uh, let's talk about um, two primary types of tariff. Okay, and the first one uh, is a specific tariff, which is a fixed charge for each unit of imported goods. Okay, uh, in other words, here what matters is the number of units instead of the price or value. Okay, so a quick um, some quick examples would be three dollars tariff imposed upon per barrel of oil. Okay, so here again, um, when government collects the tariff, um, they just count number of barrels we import it uh, to the U.S. Okay, they don't care uh, if you know one barrel of oil costs let's see one hundred twenty dollars. Or ninety dollars. Okay, so it doesn't matter how expensive or cheap uh, the imported goods are. Okay. Uh, another example could be fifty-one cents per uh, wrist watch. Okay. And uh, so this is the first type of tariff. The second type is at volume uh, tariffs, which is a fraction of the value of imported goods. Okay. Ad volume mean, simply means in proportion to its value. Okay, and uh, a quick example would be 25% tariff imposed on the value of uh, imported trucks. So let's say if the uh, imported truck uh, costs uh, $100,000 each, then the tariff would be 25% of that $100,000. So it's going to be $25,000. Okay. And, uh, in this case, uh, the price matters. Okay. All right. Here, uh, the graphical tool we're going to use to, um, do the analysis is just a very simple supply and demand graph. Okay. So we're not going to use um, you know, the pretty sophisticated models, uh, we learned in previous chapter, like, you know, a specific factor model or Hatch-Rowley model, right? And here we're, we're just going to use the very, you know, kind of the intro level stuff, the supply and demand. Okay. I guess this is the good news. Okay. Now, uh, we do have, um, the setup of the model we want to briefly discuss here. So it's a two country, one good supply and demand model. Uh, two countries are home in the foreign. Okay. Exactly the same as we saw, you know, so many times already. Okay. In the previous chapters. And one good here, we talk about the weight, but it could be anything else. Okay. Now, um, as we mentioned before, we just, you know, for simplicity, we just discuss two country model. But once we understand two countries, you can easily extend this to, you know, three countries or N country uh, model. Okay. Or another way you can interpret this is, uh, you could say this is basically uh, a model that can interpret, uh, the trading relationship between the U.S. and the rest of the world. Okay. So we take the U.S. as home and the rest of the world as foreign. And uh, another assumption we're going to make here is um, there's no effect of the exchange rate between the two currencies in Hong and foreign. Okay. Now, the reason is pretty simple. We just don't want to deal with uh, the currency issues. Okay. And if you remember, we said um, at the beginning of the semester that um, it's always good to have a solid understanding of the real economy. Uh, before we talk about the monetary economy. Okay. So we will discuss the exchange rate or the currency issues later this semester. Okay. But not at this point, because here we want you guys, uh, to, you know, just narrowly focused upon the transaction of real goods and services. Okay. So don't worry about the exchange rate. And, um, you could imagine that there's only one currency. Okay, which is a world currency in this example. Okay. Another thing we're going to say is uh, uh, we assume that the price is higher in home than that in foreign. Okay, as you could imagine, you know, this is a, um, you know, just, just give us, um, 
you know, like the starting point to discuss, right? So it doesn't really matter if you want to uh, make the assumption the other way around. You're going to say that, you know, uh, the price in foreign is higher than home. Again, it's not going to change the conclusion at all, okay? You just need to flip it, okay? The, all the conclusions we draw, you flip it because you're assuming that, you know, the uh, price in foreign is higher, okay? And uh, so, uh, you know, at this point, I guess we're ready to do the supply and demand analysis for the wheat market, okay? Now, we're going to break this down into three steps. The first step, we're going to look at the domestic market in home. Step number two, we're going to look at the domestic market in foreign. Step number three, we're going to put these two together and look at the global market. Okay. Now, once we understand how this two uh, economy system works, then we can add the tariff into our discussion. So that's what we're going to do in the next video.